Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Skate from Tarkov video. In this video, I'm going to cover the latest patch notes for 0.12.1.5413 and also some of the points brought up on the most recent podcast. Now, it is Christmas Day for me and I am going to do this in one single take. So then it's going to be a little bit more sloppier, but I don't want to spend my entire day editing this one. So I'm going to hit the points as hard as I can and uh, just give all the information from the podcast and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this hat so I can actually concentrate a little bit more. And um, now with the uh, the latest patch, there was a few changes and some things added and then a heap of fixes. Uh, we'll go with the, the current list of changes. Now with skill leveling, there's now an exhaustion to actually skill leveling. And the main point about this that I want to show, let's take it down a bit, there we go. Uh, the main point about this is if you try and level up, say, with the fire method to level up your stress resistance, it's going to have diminishing returns as you level up each level. So, you know, the first level you'll level at maybe 100% speed. The second level will be slower. Third level slower whilst it's in a short period of time. This time of exhaustion will run out and you'll be able to um, level at full speed again after a certain period of time. Now, I don't know the actual specifics about this, but um, we'll have to wait and see with that. Now, the maximum level of stimulants can't go above uh, level 60. So if you have a level 51 strength skill, you pop an adrenaline, and that's going to put your strength above. Uh, sorry, yeah. So you have a max level strength at level 51, and you pop an adrenaline stim, you won't go above level 60 strength. So it's just kind of putting a cap on that. No big deal there. Secure containers can no longer be discarded during a raid. Um, I'm guessing that means during from your container. Uh, sorry, from your backpack, you won't be able to put it into the, uh, into the, the actual you know, the world, which means you're not going to be a handoff uh, containers to other people. Uh, I'm guessing this is really a more of a targeted attack towards people either gifting their friends their containers, but more importantly, the money trading websites or the real money transfer websites where they're selling off people's gamma containers and that and Kappa containers. So that's going to really slow down um, people like abusing that system right there. Uh, secu secure containers can no longer be put inside other secure containers. Now, if you do have issues with this, um, some people said they had like secure container inside a backpack, inside a thick case, inside a secure container. If you get like, you know, something that stuffs you over like that, make sure you're reporting that to get that fixed because I know there's already one person who's approached me over that one. Our special optical devices, helmets and helmets mounts can no longer be placed in secure containers. This is the T7 thermal. If it's not the T7 thermal, I'll be very surprised and possibly some other thermals and night vision goggles as well. So this is to stop people from shooting or finding a target, putting their, container, uh, their thermal away into a container, securing it, and then going uh, and killing that person. So uh, I'm guilty of this, but I mo mostly did it and said it was stupid that you can do this. I didn't really care. People flag, flag, for, flamed me for it. So be it. It's fixed now. It's, it's, it was brought to people's attention, which is one of the reasons why I did it, and also because it was a bit of fun. So uh, that's been done. Uh, they added a limit to the amount of money that you can carry in the inventory of a character, uh, but this isn't in the stash. So you can have a limit of money in the stash, but to hand over cash to someone else, 150,000 rubles in raid, uh, $1,000 and 1,000 euros. Now, during the podcast, Nikita said that they uh, changed uh, the dollars and euros, I think, to 2,000. Um, and you can get more than this from killing raiders. It just means that sometimes you might have to miss out a little bit. Um, but I, I'm still thinking this is to target the real money transfer websites and that to prevent them trying to sell off large uh, quantities of cash by those methods. So that's cool there. Uh, if your character died without an equipable firearm, you will now uh, return to the menu with only 1% of your health. And this also goes with if you uh, kill a teammate or you're killed by a teammate, you will go back to 1% health. So it's all part of that process to um, reduce the amount of people going in without any gear and also penalizing people to do team kills. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, there are uh, things that were brought up during the podcast that was to actually make it so people didn't get um, as punished as much as in like you're more rewarded to go in with gear, but uh, I'll cover that at a later point. Now with the added, they added the option, uh, added options, in trader menu for flea market search, added hideout menu option for the flea market search and added a new music track to the main menu. So the new stuff added there, I'm not gonna go through all the bug fixes, but what I will do is I'll put a link down below so you guys can read out the patch notes on the on Reddit um, and you can go crazy over there. Every time they're gonna add these patches, they're gonna be more fixes and, and more good stuff with that. And so uh, it's there's always gonna be a large amount of fixes happening. Moving on to the actual podcast itself, 
On the podcast, there was Shroud, Clean, Julian, Fair TX hosting it, Nikita, and myself. That's all six. Yep. And um, we discussed a lot of things that would happen throughout the last year and stuff for out the future. Now, I'm going to focus mostly on the future stuff, um, but I'll quickly touch on one of the points that was in the patch notes being the diminishing returns on being able to level up skills. Um, Shroud brought up the point about changing stress resistance and sniper because they're the most grindy out of all the skills. Stress resistance now is going to be changed from uh, needing to have it at level 12, I think it was, down to level 10. Or actually, no, level 7. Uh, and the sniper skill is going to go from level... Um, it was 5, 9, 12. It's now going to be 4, 7, 10. So you're not going to have to get your sniper skill up as much. Uh, we did bring up the point of being rewarding people for taking better shots. For example, getting a headshot should give more skill points and uh, a limb shot should be giving less. Also, a range modifier. So after 100 meters, it should be like at 200 meters, you get two times the skill points for taking the shot. At 500 meters, it's five times. And, and then benefiting people, having people benefit from actually sniping with a sniper rifle for the sniper skill. So that was uh, that was brought up. That was probably more of the, the the talking based of it. And then when it came down to new stuff being added, I'm going to run through the list right now. So there's going to be a patch before point. Uh, sorry, before the end of the year, or they're trying to get it out before the end of the year, which is um, nearly all entirely about content. Now, for a little little bit of understanding for you guys, um, Russian holidays, to my understanding, it goes from New Year's to about the seventh of, of January or around that period. So Battle State Games will be working all the way up until the end of the year. Um, and in, the, in this content patch that they're trying to punch out, there's going to be a heap of new guns, new clothing, and they want to add in the killer Adidas tracksuit. And Nikita said it's going to be extremely grindy. I actually, I don't know where I heard this. I, I can't remember where, but someone said it was something like kill killer a hundred times. I'll we'll have to wait and see. It's exciting. It sounds fun and really keen to check that out. Now, there was uh, the New Year gift or Christmas New Year's gift that was just released during the podcast itself. Um, so if you haven't claimed a gift, log into your Escape from Tarkov website. Uh, log into your account on the Escape from Tarkov website. Go and uh, click the button. It's like a, it's like a box. I'll, I'll put a screenshot up there so you guys can see it. And you guys can uh, you get your gift in game. I think it's a, a med box, a, like a med box, a money case, an item case. And I think you either get like an SVD, a P90, and maybe like a 5.7 or something. So some cool stuff there. Um, they do this every year, and you'll be able to use that for every single wipe, every single patch, every single reset. That you, Oh, okay. So every time there's a wipe or you reset your account, you'll be able to claim that gift from now on until they release the next one. All right. So we, there was a lot of talk about the, uh, the Lighthouse uh, map uh, that being the boss. Uh, he's going to be called the Watcher or the Seer. And he's going to be some sort of sniper scav. Factory's going to get an overhaul. Uh, he wants to have more rooms available on Factory and just to get a, like a makeover for all its graphics because uh, it's one of the original maps. They're going to re-go over all the extractions on the older maps um, like Customs, Shoreline, uh, Woods. I think Woods has already been done. I can't remember. Yeah, they've already done Woods. It's like Customs, Shorelines and maybe Interchange. Now, to cover what they want to try and uh, put out in 2020, they want to finish the rest of the locations. Uh, they're going to add the storyline quest. They definitely want to get that done in 2020. More hideout mechanics. It's going to be like a starting area, which is kind of like a tutorial area. So people that are new to the game can at least learn the mechanics of how to do stuff. And there's going to be the final location being the map terminal. Uh, and that's where you're going to escape from Tarkov. So they want to actually complete the full loop of the game. This year, or the year is about to start in 2020, but there's going to be um, the game won't be complete. It just means that you'll actually be able to escape from Tarkov and then keep playing the game again. But um, they're still going to be doing more production past 2020 to get it to 1.0. Uh, Nikita's already thought up of about six to seven DLCs, including Scav Life, um, which we've brought up a few times. But if you don't know, it's going to have Task Karma and it's going to have its own Scav Market uh, in the hideout. They're going to add a gym place you can work out, a sewing machine and, and sewing area where you can make different uh, clothing. Um, they're going to have skills for the hideout being hideout management and a crafting skill that's just going to be coming out. Um, they're working on the jams and malfunctions side of things. So uh, the durability of suppressors and also tactical reloads. They want to have it all like rigid did for that. When it comes to characters, they're going to be working on uh, the customization of characters 
advanced weight restrictions, which is like once you get to a certain weight, you're going to walk slower, your ergonomics is going to be worse, all that kind of stuff. As well as if you get to too heavy, you'll like have more difficulty sprinting, stuff like that. Um, blood loss, they're going to add tourniquets and they want to have like two different methods of blood loss. He didn't really go into a lot of detail of that, but they do want to work into that. Um, Nikita did bring out the point that he doesn't really see how Escape from Tarkov can go any, uh, go to 1.0 and um, not have wipes after 1.0 because it just keeps the game really fresh and exciting. So he's thinking about um, maybe having a seasonal wipe where you know the main player base might play on a season uh, status like Path of Exile, but some people will just continue to play on standard, which is... Uh, interesting, if the player base can handle it, sick. If it can't handle it, then I think they'll have to look at other options, but we'll have to wait and see for that. Uh, for the Shoreline, there's a scav boss coming to Shoreline at some point. Its name's going to be the Sanator. The Sanator. <laughs> I was, it, was, it, was, it was a sticking point trying to get the name right, but it's going to be a person that will either be based in the village or on the bottom floor of the resort, and his job is you know to keep that place... Hard to get to, I guess. Um, cultists are coming. They're going to be based around the night time, and um, they're really only going to be available at night, and they're going to be sneaky, breaky as all hell, and they're going to sneak up on people and split throats, and it's going to be scary. So I've covered majority of the points. Uh, it was hard to take notes while it was actually going on, and I just wanted to make sure that um, I got this information out to you guys as quickly as possible because it is Christmas for me. It's uh, well, just on 20 to 9 in the morning. I've been up since 4.30 for this podcast. But if you haven't checked it out, I'll put a link down to the podcast uh, in the description below. A lot of interesting talk, a lot of banter. And um, just it was just like a, a bit more wholesome of a, of a podcast, I felt like. It was a bit more, you know, just more a bit of banter-based pod- podcast than, than, you know, Q&A style, which was kind of nice to have for, for a uh, more official podcast. I don't know if everyone else enjoyed it or not, but... Anyway, I'm starting to uh, rant on here. So, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Merry Christmas to everyone out there, and hope you have a safe and wonderful holiday season. If you don't celebrate Christmas, at least have a safe holiday period um, and spend some time with family. Um, I will be streaming over the next week, but you won't see really any more YouTube videos until I've got one more up the bank. Oh, up the bank? But one, one more up the container uh, for later this week. And then on Sunday is when I'll start posting videos every day again. Just taking some time to spend some time with my family before I head to Europe next year. On that note, I'll also put a link down below. Second YouTube channel. If you haven't checked out, I'm moving to Europe for 11 months next year. I uh, would love any support you can give on that channel. Subscriptions, comments, likes. Uh, and we've got to get the minutes up to get that channel monetized because that's going to be my wife's little baby. She's going to be doing uh, a lot of the editing for the vlogging on that channel. Hey guys, to finish up, thanks for watching another video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. I do stream on Twitch every day of the week. So go down the link below. Give me a follow over there. You got any talk or questions, feel free to hit me up my live stream or down in the comments below. And lastly, I'll see you next time. Jingle bells, Veritas smells, slush laid an egg. I don't know any more words. Merry Christmas, everyone.